It's The Real News, I'm Dharna Noor. Pro-fossil fuel industry messages are seen in print publications, around high-profile sporting events, on billboards, and on TV ads. Here's one that promotes natural gas. Advertising and mass communication on behalf of the fossil fuel industry, the industry most scientists say is a central culprit of climate change, in short, is prolific. Fossil fuel and other corporate trade groups paid PR and advertising firms at least $1.4 billion from 2008 to 2017. That's according to a new report from Climate Investigation Center. And joining us here to talk about that report is Kurt Davies. He is the director of the Climate Investigation Center. He's joining us from Alexandria, Virginia today. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's great to be here. Uh, so I want to start by asking you uh, how, how you actually uncovered all of this. Well, it started in 2014 when we sent a survey, a, a brief questionnaire to a bunch of PR companies, the top ones in the business, asking them about if they had any individual climate plans at, with their companies, if they had carbon tracking or if they did any business in climate change. Turns out nobody had ever asked the PR companies these questions before, but we got some very interesting responses, including the biggest company, Edelman, who accidentally sent me an email saying, there are only wrong answers here. Don't respond. So we, we put that out with The Guardian, and The Guardian took it a step further and asked these companies if they would pledge not to engage in climate denial, not to, to put out false information with advertising. And it, it turned into a big uh, a snowball of news in the fall of 2014. On the heels of that, the Center for Public Integrity looked at the spending that is disclosed in these trade association 990, their, their tax forms. That it, when, when a trade association like the American Petroleum Institute, it's technically classified as a charity under the IRS rules. It has to submit a form that talks about its income and its outlays. And in those forms, the Center for Public Integrity found that API, the American Petroleum Institute, was the largest spender and Edelman was the largest recipient of these funds. This is only scratching the surface, I have to say, because you uh, you only see the top five uh, contractors in those tax forms, so we can't see dozens of other contractors at a smaller scale. But the contracts we looked at include $75 million one year to Edelman from American Petroleum Institute, for example. And Edelman is, uh, for those who don't know, the largest PR firm uh, in the, the world, I believe. Uh, and API, American Petroleum Institute, is sort of the, the strong arm trade industry um, for, uh, or trade representative for the fossil fuel industry. Um, right. And so you mentioned uh, that 2015 report from Center for Public Integrity. Much is made of the money that these industries spend on lobbying, but but your report builds on that uh, Center for Public Integrity report that showed that while federal lobbying grabs the attention of the public and policymakers, public relations spending by trade associations actually far outweighs what they spend on lobbying. Uh, does that mean that it's cheaper to buy off members of Congress and federal agencies than the hearts and minds of the public? I think it's all, it's all connected. Uh, these firms are hired to sort of soften up the public uh, public square for these companies and these trade associations to get their way. Uh, so they spend money on specific advertising, much of it in the DC metro area. You'll see these ads pop up during the Sunday news talk shows, for example, which is pretty expensive turf to buy. You'll see metro ads, you know, uh, placards in the metro station sometimes, or you'll see very targeted online ads. And all that is to lay a backdrop not only on fossil fuels, you see it on military spending, you see it on other things, but these guys spend a lot more. And I think your question is the right one. Why are they doing it? And how does it link up with the lobbying spending that they, they do? Um, and it's really intricate. I mean, we have one plan where we got leaked an Edelman plan for TransCanada, which was the Keystone Pipeline Company, where they were trying to get a different pipeline to cross Canada and drop the, the oil off at the Atlantic Ocean for shipment overseas. In that plan, there's an intricate web of strategies to get over farmers and towns and indigenous populations on the way to the Atlantic Ocean. So advertising was one segment of that bigger plan, but they also talked about many other lobbying and public affairs strategies. So these, 
It's much more than advertising is the short answer. And most of that, again, was from the American Petroleum Institute. They got three or $358.9 million from API. Could you talk a little bit more about what API does, what role they play in the political system, and, and how Edelman landed some of these, these huge contracts? Well, uh, the, how they got the contracts is, is probably unknown. They know. Um, but the uh, API is, as you said in the beginning, the oil and gas lobby arm. It is a, a giant building here in D.C. that is... It does all of the, uh, the the scut work for the oil industry on Capitol Hill and nationally. Uh, we know, for example, that Edelman worked on a campaign starting in 2009. Um, again, we got a leaked memo that showed the head of API um, launching this thing called Energy Citizens. And what they were trying to do was ride the wave of the Tea Party and create out of thin air rallies of people that look like normal Americans who were pushing for energy as their top issue and were claiming that they would vote uh, on that issue and were nudging politicians. Um, that evolved into something called Vote for Energy, which was a multi-million dollar campaign launched in 2012 to specifically to influence the presidential elections. We've and actually got a clip of one of those ads. Let's, let's roll it before we <laughs> keep going. I vote. I vote. I vote for American jobs. I vote. I vote for more domestic energy. Energy from all sources. To get America working again. I vote. I vote. I vote for energy security. And I believe that uh, it was found, Greenpeace found actually, that uh, that campaign was, uh, you know, said to be full of volunteers, but but they were actually being fed lines. Yeah, those most of those people were recruited probably on Craigslist, you know, with an offer of, you know, real people needed for, for advertising. And they read a script uh, that you heard there. So that was, but you see the visual is intended to look like a cross section of America who is voting for energy as if it's the most important thing in the world. And we know that's not true. You know, education, jobs, a lot of other things top people's lists of why they vote or why they choose candidates. But they wanted to give the impression that there was a movement out there of people who were focused on energy. They're still doing that campaign. A different PR firm appears to have taken over the, the, the contract with API, but it's still going. Energy Citizens is still online and they're still pushing it. Uh, and Edelman, the report, the report uh, points out, also landed contracts from uh, the American fuel and petrochemical manufacturers, uh, of which Coke's, Coke Industries is a subsidiary. Um, Flint Hill Resources is a member. Coke Industries, as much of your work has pointed out over the years, and as we've said a number of times here on The Real News, is a key funder of climate change denial messaging. But on their website, Edelman says that climate change is, quote, one of the most important global challenges facing society, business, and government today. Uh, why? How do you think they reconcile, re reconcile their, their role in promotion for these fossil fuel industries? Well, they, they just put that statement up after our 2014 um, uh, hit. Was later, they had to put that statement up claiming that they cared about climate change. Meanwhile, inside Edelman, they were trying to get more and more oil business. It was revealed through various journalists revealed that uh, Mr. Edelman was trying to make them the largest uh, company by far, uh, trying to reach a billion dollars in revenue. Uh, the, much of that revenue goes through Edelman to buy TV time, by the way, so it ends up with CNN or NBC. But they were they were actually growing that business at the same time as they had sort of a greenish business side uh, doing PR for companies that were trying to do good. And there was a major internal scuffle between those two camps. So. They ended up being ditched by API or lost the contract with API. They they cut off their advertising arm, which is called Blue, and that maintained the API contract after Edelman was left uh, or left the building. There's some debate about whether they actually got fired or they just figured out that was a better PR move to not be associated for the time being. Uh, but that you know this is enormous business. The the bottom line is we're seeing a, a tiny little bit of what is a multi-billion dollar annual influence peddling industry in DC and around the country to try to influence our minds around issues like fossil fuels. Uh, but renewable industries like wind and solar advertise too. So how does their spending compare to the oil and gas industries to coal? Uh, how does the fossil fuel industry spending compare to other industries? 
Well, the, the, yes, the, we also analyzed, like Center for Public Integrity did, uh, the American Wind Energy Association and the Solar Energy Association just to compare. And it turns out that if you add all of them up, including uh, the ones that do biofuels and ethanol, which are called renewable energies, um, they are a, a fraction of the total spending by the API and the other fossil arms and the Chamber of Commerce and the National Association of Manufacturers. Right. Even API alone is six times the total spending of all the renewable energy uh, associations combined. Uh, and the oil industry did spend more than any other fossil fuel industry, but Big coal didn't pinch pennies when it comes to PR spending. Uh, your report details that the coal industry trade group American Coalition on Clean Coal Electricity spent uh, $126.4 million uh, during this time period. That's 8.9% uh, of the grand total. And, and much right. of that money went to uh, the firm DCI Group, which has important ties to the Republican Party. Uh, could, you, could you talk about uh, big coal spending? Well, the, the coal industry, especially in the early years of this, uh, the scope of this analysis, which begins in 20, 2008 and ends in 2017, in the beginning, they were really striving for some credibility. You know, they, they put a lot of effort into the 2008 election with a field campaign where they were trying to get people to talk about clean coal. Um, they, they put an enormous effort into the early Obama years to try to block measures to, to cut uh, coal. And those are the, that's when the spending added up. And in fact, the, the head of the American Council for Clean Coal Electricity was a former RNC guy and an associate of Karl Rove. I mean, very deep ties. You still see this coming. You still see a, a promotion of coal by the Republican Party. Uh, but coal is, is, has been knocked out mainly by gas in this country, which is so much cheaper now. Uh, so that, that spending number does rise up in this report as very significant. So it's Almost, a, it's a much smaller industry by scale, uh, by revenue than than fossil than oil and gas, but they spend way outside their uh, their weight. And and DCI Group also has more recently uh, doing some work to uh, discredit pipeline protesters. Could you talk a little bit about about their more recent work? So DCI is not an advertising company. DCI is more of a public affairs and a political PR company. They they worked on the Romney campaign, I believe, and they they have deep ties, uh, a multi-skilled uh, uh, office here in DC. For years, they worked with Exxon. They uh, built something called Tech Central Station, which was an early blog site that was basically promoting corporate interests through uh, apparently independent thinkers from think tanks and. They have uh, they've gotten into all sorts of uh, dirty tricks, including sending uh, video cassettes to TV stations in the Gulf Coast area the year after Katrina, saying there was no connection to from from climate change to hurricanes, uh, looking like it was actual news when it was actually a fabricated video news release. So they're. There are different species than just the type of ad companies that you see advertising hamburgers on TV. I, I want to wrap up by asking you if there's any evidence that all of this spending is working. Um, is there evidence that all of this PR is influencing public opinion? I mean, this year, uh, Yale did a poll that shows that Americans' concern for climate change has surged to record levels. Um, does that mean that this money is is not being put to good use or, or that they know something that we don't? These companies, so this, again, this spending that we see just from the trade associations does not include the tens of millions that are spent by Exxon, for example, which during the last Winter Olympics spent, had a huge ad campaign sponsorship of the TV coverage, including people will remember an ad about algae. Right. Um, all of this is to gain social license. These companies know that they're under pressure, that people don't like their their business, don't like being dependent on fossil fuels, and the increasing awareness of climate change puts them in the spotlight. So they really need people to appreciate it, what they do. Uh, one of the more recent campaigns is called Power Past Impossible, and they, they just show all the great things that energy does in our lives every day and take credit for it. So they want us to love them, yeah, that uh, bright, flashy ad about natural gas in the introduction was actually from Power Past Impossible. There you go. So that's the that's the gig. So they they want us to trust them and love them, and they don't want uh, politicians or elected officials uh, doing anything that harms them. That's the bottom line. So 
to answer your question more succinctly, it must be worth it if they spend 10 million, 20 million a year doing it. I'm sure these trade associations, you know, have, have metrics where they measure the success of these campaigns. All right. Well, thank you so much for this uh, really rather revelatory report. Um, viewers, please stay aware uh, of who is sponsoring the advertising that you're seeing around you. Uh, and Kurt Davies, hopefully we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks so much for being on The Real News. Thank you. And thank you for watching The Real News Network.